Greetings, readings. Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand. A question here. Could some of your other ingredients in candida, such as hydro, uh, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, dicalcium phosphate, and magnesium stearate, be removed or replaced by alternative ingredients? They could, but there's no point. So let's explain about these excipient stuff and put this to bed, hopefully. So dicalcium phosphate is very commonly used in nearly all tablet dietary supplements. Basically, it's an odor remover, so it sanitizes the product. It gives the container a fresh smell, all right? Basically, you've got calcium and a, and, a, and a kind of a phosphate mixed together. It's very commonly used in the food industry as well. It's basically calcium and phosphorus mixed. It's not really going to create any harm to your body at all. So chances are you'll be eating that in most foods that you consume to some degree. I don't really see it being an issue at all in adding these minerals uh, into a dietary supplement. People get pretty anal and freaked out with any kind of excipient, but they'll talk for half an hour on their mobile phone, or they'll have their face in front of their computer, they'll have their car window down smelling all the pollution, they'll be drinking water with fluoride or chlorine in it, They'll be, they'll be downing a Dr. Peppers and having a piece of pizza and, oh my God, this tablet's got stearate in it or something like that. So people really freak out about crazy things when they should be total, have a total meltdown about their lifestyle in general, but they don't. It's very easy to look at a little tiny speck or a fly on a wall when you're failing to see that there's a big crack on the other side of the wall and the house is about to fall down, okay? So just be careful about getting not anal about one thing in your life at the exclusion of looking at, you know, the whole life in general. Let's look at magnesium stearate. <clears throat> Good old Thorne Research put the boot into this one. So their CEO um, had a great way of really amping up sales with his encapsulated supplements by sinking the boot into good old magnesium stearate. So magnesium stearate was promoted or pushed as a toxic kind of a product used in supplements for many years by uh, by form research they heavily promoted this uh, uh, perpetuated this idea is to get well obviously to get high capsule sales and to push tablets right down so but let's talk about magnesium stearate for a minute because it's a load of bs that magnesium stearate's toxic or undigestible or things like that <clears throat> magnesium stearate is stearic acid which is a fat which is commonly found in coconut oil, it's found in cocoa, in chocolate, it's found in many different kinds of meats like beef and chicken, chicken skin. So if you're eating any kind of meat, any kind of chocolate, any kind of coconut product, you're getting stearic acid. Oh my God, don't tell me that, now I can't eat anything, All right? And it's about six to eight percent, they're going to mix magnesium oxide with this stearic acid to make mag stearate, which is used to hold certain ingredients of the tablet together. Now, you'll have no problem breaking down these long tail fat, long chain fatty acids at all. A normal healthy person like you or me can easily break them down. Now, but if you've got, say, serious hepatitis or cirrhosis of the liver, if you've been a naughty person drinking a bottle of whiskey a day and your liver's clapped out on you, well, you may have a problem with stearic acid. But I don't think you're watching this video if you're on, on, you know, on the bones of your bum and you're going to die because of liver cancer or something like that, maybe then you can't tolerate magsterate. Or if you've got pancreatic cancer, for example, it's not a good idea. But chances are you probably haven't got pancreatic or liver cancer watching this video now. So most likely you can tolerate magnesium stearate. People get so freaked out about magnesium stearate, it's almost ridiculous. Some people see it like plutonium. If they go near it or smell it, they'll die of cancer or something. Folks, there's nothing wrong with stearate. I've looked at the debate, I've spent hours researching it, I've talked to biochemists at a very high level about mag stearate and they burst out laughing. And one guy said to me, if you worry about mag stearate, you've got much, much bigger fish to fry in your life than good old magnesium stearate. It's been used for a long time now in such an incredible amount of different foods and supplements. You would have been eating stearate for many, many, many years in your diet as it is. So even vegans consume stearic acids, you know, probably uh, coconut oil, for example. So don't freak out about mag stearate. The hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is very harmless. It's a fiber that breaks down and it's plant derived, usually from different types of pine trees or different fibers they make a cellulose from. And the reason why we use the, high, the, the hydroxypropyl form is basically we mix it with the, the ingredients. We put a bit of stearic acid with it and the mag stearate, the cellulose gets mixed with it and it has a fantastic effect on delaying 
the ability of the product to break down rapidly in the body. It's a trick I learned many years ago. If you want a supplement to really last a long time in someone's GI tract and slowly break down, the, the methyl cellulose will do that beautifully. So it sort of like sustains the delivery of the product. I learned that from a very clever tablet person years ago. He said, don't tell anyone, this is a secret. You know, I mean, there's no secrets. You can tell people this kind of stuff. So the dicalcium phosphate is, is cool. You'll have no health effects from that. The methyl cellulose, again, you're not going to die of, you know, some sort of weird disease having that. And the mag stearate, well, I hope I put that one to bed. There's no need to change these ingredients, all right? This supplement, Kanzita, has been used on a lot of people now. I've had no reported deaths or suicides or, you know, uh, people turning into Jekyll and Hyde or, or vampires or Frankenstein or stuff. So I've had no issues with it. I'm totally um, fine with it. So there's no need to remove or replace these items. If you don't wish to take a supplement because of this, because you fear this, then to me the fear um, is the big handicap you've got. And for that reason, you shouldn't take it. And you may not want to take any dietary supplements um, if you have that kind of fear factor, you know, about taking things. But I can assure you that there's no issues with these, uh, these excipients whatsoever. Thanks for tuning in.